But what do you guys think about um scat pack wide body maybe? Yeah, uh okay, so oh. scat pack wide body, but what I about have something the... to say about that? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let the controversy begin right here. Okay. Okay. Um uh, before people savage me, people watching this savage me, I've been a Mopar guy for a long, long time, over 20 years, a diehard Mopar guy. I'm a Challenger owner. I have an SRT Challenger. And uh, so don't take offense at what I'm about to say. You know, it's but, going to be good when he puts that many disclaimers on it. But yeah. I do not like the wide bodies. And I'll give you two good reasons why I don't like the wide bodies. Number one, just from a purely aesthetic standpoint, the regular body cars are much more attractive. Dodge did not, in my opinion, do a good job uh, flaring out the fenders. Had I disagree, if I was <laughs> right, no, no, I'm Bob's your right. yes. So you're gonna let me speak, and then you'll tell me why I'm wrong. Okay, I'll listen. okay. Let's hear it. Let's hear. Let it. me get it out. <laughs> Uh, if I were designing the Challenger wide body, I would have done flares that blend into the bodywork of the car. What Dodge yes. opted to do was uh, to have a more just like bolted on look. And to me, that bolted on look is exactly what aftermarket wide body kit builders were doing before there was such a thing as a wide body challenger. And it looks very boy racer to me. It looks stuck on, it looks kind of cheap to me. Okay. Have I not been saying that Vinny? Seriously, have I not been saying that to you? Yeah, well, Greg, it all goes back to the fact that we're like brothers from another mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we share a brain. All yeah. Right. Listen, that's... no, look, I, I want to answer you, Greg, but Rob told me I have to wait to hear all of his reasons. Okay. So. okay, so that's number one. <laughs> from a purely aesthetic standpoint, I think it looks tacked on and like an afterthought. Um, having said that, of course, I recognize the fact that especially in Hellcat models with either 717 horsepower or in the case of the Red Eye, 797, and in the case of the Super Stock, over 800 horsepower, uh, transmitting that to the road on a standard body uh, set of tires, which are 275s out of the factory is impossible. You cannot use that much power with 275 millimeter width tires. The wide body packages afford you a 305 tire stock. Uh, and you're starting to get into some serious meat there. So if you track your car, your Challenger, then by all means go buy a wide body and who cares how it looks because you're competing, okay? But in terms of aesthetics, I will reiterate, the normal body cars look much better. Okay, so that's second, only one reason. Wait, wait, I'm not okay, done. All right, all right. The second reason, and then it's your turn, is that just from a philosophical standpoint, when the Challenger, the new Challenger was first unveiled as a um, concept car in 2006, um, it very closely resembled uh, the, the challengers that we all know and love from the early 70s, the e-body uh, uh, challengers and, and of course, Kudas. And it's what attracted me personally to the car in the first place. Dodge did an amazing job. And I think we've touched on this before. Out of the big three American muscle cars, the Camaro, uh, Mustang, and Challenger, Dodge, in terms of styling, really of the three, hit it out of the park. They've they've managed to uh, not significantly change the looks or proportions of the car uh, since 2008, when it was first released, or 2006, for that matter, when the concept car was just shown. Um, and the reason for that is it's just an amazing design that harkens back to an iconic like an all-time iconic muscle car, arguably one of the prettiest muscle cars uh, ever designed, the E-Body Challengers and Kudos. And for me, because of that, putting wide body, a wide body kit on that car destroys that retro cred. 
like the whole point of the Challenger was it was a retro design. Uh, uh, for Greg, like the retro design of the Mustang released in, uh, what was it, 04, five. Greg? 05. Yeah. 05. Uh, you know, that was a period of time where retro was really in. Um, and, and Dodge just nailed it. And I think you slap a wide body kit on an, an amazing design and you sort of dilute mm -hmm. the retroness that made it popular. I End agree. of scene. Yep. Now, okay. Vinny. Well, the, you've made my work very easy, Rob. I'm, I'm uh, just going to say this. I'll, I'm, I'll, I, I will stamp my name to everything Rob just said. Okay. Well, I'm just, easy, I'm just I, saying, just. I can easily counter both of those points because it, I like the car uh, it's like for the exact opposite reason is that you stated. Um, the, the design was getting stale. They had to do something. Um, and, uh, you know, they couldn't. You. It was. I mean, 13 <laughs> years almost, right? Like it's been around for a while. It's, it's, and they've made millions of them and they sell like hotcakes. People love the car. So mm. they had to do something to update the look of the car without totally redesigning the car. So, you know, to your point, yeah, it cost them, it, it probably to you looks cheap because it was cheap for them to do it, right? I mean, how hard was it to just bolt those those fender flares on? Yeah, and okay. it started, we should mention at this point that the first wide body challenger was the Demon. And right. it, was, it was really by necessity because they were putting 840 ponies with race gas into the demon and with anything less than 300 series tires you you just spin out and that's the and that's the exact other reason why i love it right because it's performance. performance oriented um they did it out of necessity uh who doesn't want a wider tire on their car right whether you're at the drag strip or um at the racetrack um i mean it's it just makes well, sense right 